Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. At this channel, we are a law-abiding group of people who do not like criminals, terrorists, their financiers, enablers, supporters and the likes. At this channel, we believe criminals must live in fear of losing their lives and not the law-abiding citizens. We do believe in preemptive strikes when dealing with criminals and terrorists alike. We want our community to be free from terrorists and parasites. Well, as you can see, um, looking at your thumbnail, yes, you're going to see um, that's a man, um, one of Jamaica's most wanted men. Not only in Jamaica, but he was on the FBI most wanted list. So, you know, right here, we are going to expose um, corruption within the police force and how it affects good police officers. And sometimes, um, when the police officers refuse to go along with their corrupt leadership, they will frame them and end up in jail. So I want you to listen to this detective, uh, what happened to him with his corrupt supervisors. And he paid the ultimate price because he refused. When I say ult um, ultimate price, not with his life, but with his career. And they dog him for it. And he paid and suffered. So. You know, whenever you're an honest police officer in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, you just prepare for being a scapegoat or prepare for the one that who's going to reputation who's going to be tarnished by the upper echelon of the police force who are the criminals. Yeah, so this detective, um, he was shot and injured during a shootout with this wanted man who was wanted by the FBI. And there was a US $1 million bounty on his head which was going to be paid by the American government if the, this man is caught dead or alive. This policeman was shot and injured during the shootout with this um, gunman in St. James uh, because he refused to go along with his corrupt supervisor, the transfer him from St. James to Westmoreland. And when he went there, he thought that because he did not went along with them, they all had a plan for him. And I want you to listen. This is the police force that the corruption is still rife even to this to this day. Good police officers very rare make it to the top. You have to be a corrupter. And this man, because he did not go along, this man almost loses his life, you know. I am not going to tell you his name, but I remember, you know, he was on TVG after the shootout with the gun with this murderer because this man was wanted for several counts of murder in america plus in jamaica and this policeman was shot and injured during the shootout but there was a us one million dollar reward on the man and his upper the upper echelon of the police force they wanted him to lie so that they could get the money and he refused to lie to the to the u.s marshals and he was transferred from St. James to Westmoreland and the next thing, <laughs> this policeman, uh, he paid with his character. But, so I want you to listen, my loyal viewers and subscribers. I really happened lately. Like, you know, cause maybe it, you know, it, the, 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 the whole thing was not, was not explained in its entirety. You know, so I want to just give a uh, uh, recap of what really happened. Mr. Bernard who was the crime officer. One day called me and asked me to investigate a matter pertaining to, to a guy named Dwayne who is said to be a, a um, I think he's a he's a he's a he's a artist in in Japan and in the buildings. All right. The thing about it is that the some money was sent to him by some people from overseas. All right. And. After it passed a certain time, they could not get the, the plan or there was no building started. 
So, them start to send threat to the brother doing it, pertaining to it. So, he run go to Mr. Bernard. He tell him, say the people are threatening him. Alright, so Mr. Bernard pass on the information to me and ask me to do some investigations in it. I remember I contacted the uncle and also the com virtual complainant in the matter. And I requested that they come to the station and and um make a report so they came to the station and they spoke to me and i requested from them to get um some printout from the bank as to how that money was was dispersed within the account because they are saying that when they check with the bank there is no money to that amount which is 17 million in the account all right so i spoke to duane on his phone and I asked him to come in and make we can sit and talk with the complainant and him and see how best it can be worked out every time that i call him and spoke with him i then him, him on his way to ochi in terms of him have a work, him have, him have do a Negril. Um, some place him have been lonely. And there's always an excuse. So it happened that I was in Kingston because I know I go to town every Thursday on police business. I go, I go up a lab and I go, um, I go Ciaro. So when I was in Kingston the Thursday, I get a call from the police that was on patrol that Dwayne was pointed out to them by the complainant. And they were requesting from me what is it that they should do pertaining to him. So I said, all right, since he's very evasive, I said, make him put, put him on his, on his cell in the whole area. And when I reach a work on Friday morning, I would deal, I would deal, deal with it. The Friday when I went in, I got the 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 complainant, and they came to the station. We all sat in the CIB office. He requested that his aunt should be there that are doing it. And I remember. The, the the complainant is saying that what they need is their money because they see where based on the statement that they got from the bank is saying that the money came into the account and there was an overdraft of 4.5 million dollars all right to date then when they were speaking to me they are saying that they the, the 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 rest of money is being is is withdrawn by Mr. Dwayne, and Mr. Dwayne could not give an account of the money. People said that they need the money because they wanted to start building a house out of Amity, and that's where the, the land is. So they have pointed out the land to him. He's supposed to draw the plan. Not even the plan. Not even the plan the man had to show the people in that. All right. So they decided that what they need is their money. So the people are saying that they are willing to for him to reimburse the money. So we said, okay. So the agreement was between the the two parties that on the following Friday in same of a pay bill to do in in Negril. So he would have taken 500,000 to the people on the following Friday. I remember I was in the court's office speaking with the, 
the then Constance Mr. Perry and Mr. Cook, deceased Cook Farmer, um, Clark Court. When I saw him came to the class reception area inside of the court, um, the court office, he beckoned to me, so I tell him that I soon come. When I went out there to him, he tell me that he only have 100 to forget the people. And he's asking me if I could take it and give it to them. Because he, he has to be in Otreus. Um sometime was about 10 o'clock that morning. So I said no to I said no, hey. I can't take money from you for giving to the people. You will have to hand that money to the people and tell them what the reason you're supposed to get 500,000 come and they're coming with 100,000. So I rush my friend there. I'm going to go back and go deal with the, the clerk of court and thing. When I'm up at the office, I, I asked Francis to call the, the people, because Francis would have had their number. So they came. When they came, I told them what the man said. Soon after, he came to the CIB office. We always sitting inside the CIB office. And him, 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 him tell the people, him say, 100,000 he have. So I turned to the people and I said, are you willing to accept the 100,000 from him? Or if not, better we just deal with it and carry go a court. The people them say, since he come with the $100,000, why make him leave with it? So they take the $100,000 from him. I remember I, I, I asked other members of the CIB team that was there if any of them have a receipt book. They said, no. So what I did was get a full scab 13 too. You know, write up the receipt. Both parties signing gave a copy to him and gave the people a copy and 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 then the guy leave. After I left, I was sitting in the CIB office when I saw some men came inside here, introduced themselves as they are from anti-corruption and uh, asked me if me do any business with him. I said, no, I facilitated. And a transaction with him and, 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 and some people pertaining to some money which he has misappropriated. So I said, all right. So they took me, they said that they wanted to talk to me in the sergeant office. By the time I was going to the sergeant office, I went to the to pull out my gun. Then them start search me. I said, no, 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 search me. So I take out all of what I have in my pocket. That morning I had something like about three, five thousand dollar bill in my pocket. And I realized when they take out, when they take up the money half of the thing, they then look funny and then put it down. But the money that the guy had paid in, the hundred thousand was all in a thousand dollar bill. Now the the, the uncle who came and collected the money was in the CIB office talking to one woman, woman constable. She died over in Chulani the other day. She was working at um, at MID and she sick and died. So the complainant was talking to her in the CIB office. So when they didn't find the money where they want for me, you see when one of them go out and they make a call and then they come in back and then they say with the man again the deal with and then one of them come outside and call the man by name and the man came in and when the man come in ask the man if he can get any money from 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 doing it and the man say yes he's supposed to give me 100,000 and see the man take you out and, and give them so I see when them are check the serial number them so I realized that that they, they would have done something pertaining to the money you understand me 
then then take me the the the, the complainant and francis so take me and francis go a bar town in a st james and take the man go a free port you understand me they did what them supposed to did that be in a lack of pay about a week it was six nights and seven days on the final day then come release with the DPP so then I no evidence to charge me. So from that I did initiated a, a, um, I think the, a, a, I spoke to a lawyer in Kingston and at one point the lawyer was requesting permission based on what they said request permission from the commissioner to initiate um, court proceedings which the commissioner refused. The lawyer went ahead and put it before this, the, 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 the Supreme Court. And that is where the matter is from 2013 until today. The last thing I heard is that the, the, um, the Attorney General was supposed to file a defense, which they didn't. So the court is, I think, the lawyer is now waiting on permission from the court to to request compensation so that is where how far the matter is now and you know as we say nobody now gonna push me around so my brother may work hard and regardless of what the amount of transfer I may get after that and and even promotion was nil for me that never done me I finish up my 32 years. You understand me, brother? But my day, man, I'm still alive, healthy, the whole and strong, same way. So, you have listened to the learned and esteemed police officer who was victimized by his superior. He was set up, he was jailed, and as you heard him said, he was transferred all over the place and been victimized. And he wasn't promoted. Before we go any further, have you subscribed to the channel as yet? If you haven't subscribed, you know, go ahead and click the subscription button. It does cost a penny, a dime, a nickel for you to subscribe, and it won't clog up your phone memory. You won't have any problem. And click all so that whenever we at this channel release a video, you'll be the first per first one to receive a notification. So you'll be able to be a one step ahead of others like the video and share the video with your loved ones and most of all comment below so moving on as you can hear the detective says that he was ostracized then the great and he was framed by the leadership of the police force all because of this case so you'll hear that in depth you know this is just a taste because he was transferred from St. James to Westmoreland. So you you know, so you'll hear the reason why he ended up in Westmoreland, in which it had to do with the most wanted man. That man that was killed, Hopeton Eric Brown, otherwise called otherwise Carl Sandakan. And this detective suffered. He was shot and injured. And the next thing because there was a one million dollar reward out for this man. By the FBI and his superior wanted him to lie to the United States Marshals and he did not and he paid the ultimate price. So now you see who are the real criminals in the police force. It's not the little man that's in the in the office that mindy with other people. And if you have noticed they are dismantled the um the CIB because detectives, you know, are the ones who know the bad guys. Detectives don't even have the Detectives can't even patrol in Jamaica anymore. Detectives are all, they're supposed to remain in office. So that's the reason why you have the crime rate is so high. Because the detectives know the criminals and they focus on them. Uniform police are pretty much lazy police. Uniform police are like security guards. So they're leaving the security of the nation to the uniform police. I don't know for what reason because the uniform police are the ones um they are not energetic and they have the investigative skills and stuff like that to deal with the criminals 
you understand but the detectives are we you know back in the days we were the ones who were who would confront you know Hopeton Eric Brown but the thing is that now the politician did not like that because they know that name brand police were effective so St. Andrew Holiness along with Peter for this they, they use um, Owen Ellington to dismantle the police force and make the police force impotent so that's the reason why you have the crime is getting out of honor um, at this time in Jamaica so there you have it that is this is part one so very shortly you'll get part two and you're gonna be shocked to hear what they have done to this man yes a lot of police officer have endured all kind of things in the police force but some just keep it silent so we're in the era now where people you commit your crimes when you're in the police force we're not going to let you get away we're going to expose it so you have to treat everyone equal so the days where a man um, committed this crime and retire and everybody say he's good no we're going to expose you guys now because we know most of you are political activists in the police force and you are the police force you don't have the, pe the peoples of Jamaica's interests at heart are members of the police force you're just corrupt and all about yourself just like um, Raymond DSP Raymond Bulldog Wilson and Corporal Rowan James and we have a beautiful day Jamaica Young Police out.